Okay, here we are in another match with Black Dredge Pauper Devotion something something. Um, we've lost a dice roll. Let's see what he does. I imagine he'll be taking the play. Uh, this hand's fine. Anything that goes 1, 2, 3 in this deck's normally pretty good. Would I like to mulligan to 6 cards? No, I would not. He mulligans to 5, which, uh, you know, because we're such powerful wizards, really. The new art on Springleaf Drum. Kinda sweet. Kinda weird. Um, although this is probably the second weirdest art on this card compared to the first one. Misses his land drop. Okay, this one might be a little, little elementary. Attack for one. Sign in blood. Keep those lands coming. And here we see the power of Chittering Rats as it is a complete jerk and locks him out of the game. Good job, Chittering Rats. That is why that effect is so much better than having them discard a card. Just get those situations where they're just behind and you just know that they can't draw anything because they're putting something from their hand on top of their deck. Another carry on feeder. Uh, cool. This is going to be an awfully large grey merchant. I'm assuming this is Affinity that we're playing against, by the way, which is one of the top two decks in this format, and quite strong, quite fast. It's uh, playing in a tog and uh, fling game, mostly, in that it just sacrifices a bunch of artifacts and kills you in one go. Becomes hard to block as well. There's a concession, and not much of a game, so sorry about that, guys. I'm sure he'll give me a better go in the sideboard games. Um, actually, we want our... Whilst you feel like you want some life against the Affinity deck, you want conditionless removal in that it doesn't matter how big the creature is. Uh, they can often often just sacrifice a land or something to make their Atogs X-Fours, and whilst it's good when Soren Sursen does work, it's really a uh, awkward spot to be in. So. Uh, putting in all that stuff, putting in Tendrils of Corruption because it is big enough and it kills Frogmite still and blah blah blah, it's pretty swingy. Um, leaving in Stinkweed Imps, Stinkweed Imps are particularly good in this match. Fumesuit is pretty bad though, so that's coming out. Uh, and I think I'm just going to take out all these Sign in Bloods. Having blockers is important. A lot You do end up doing a lot of jumping in this match, so... This hand seems sweet. One land away from being extremely, extremely good. Double Obliate. If we ever see a Grey Merchant, it'll be good. If we ever see a Marsh Mist Titan, it'll be almost free. I don't want a Mulligan. Okay. Uh, interesting. Do we run the Baron Moor out now? I don't think so. Get our tortured existence onto the table. Ica Wellspring. Super sweet card. I'm glad it's getting played in a bunch of formats now. It's getting modern play as well as uh, pauper play. And a free Frogmite. Uh, there is some question as to where, whether we're, whether or not we kill it right here. I feel like it's fine just taking the damage um, in service of playing this Baron Moor tapped. It's only a 2-2. Two -two. So it's definitely more the Atogs that you're worried about coming from this deck. Here are our Savage Beats. And 
It's also nice to leave something which is a target for tendrils of corruption. Green mana. So, Carapace Forger, I imagine. Uh, 2 cost 4-4 four, four in this deck, pretty much, so... Is that good? I think that's good. And we will obliate to deal with it. Yeah, it's funny that these cards and these synergies, which were present in the, uh, the Scars of Mirrodin block, but weren't quite pushed enough, are good in this format. Um, I I remember always wanting to play Carapaz, Forger, and Ickle Wellspring in the same deck, but they weren't even good in block. It was all about Tempered Steel. Um, so it's nice that there is a format in which you get to play with those cards to a large effect. Obviously it was quite good in draft, but... Uh, well, it was in Scars, 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 but it got a lot worse. As the block moved on. Forecast, possibly the best divination ever. Uh, I'll be interested to see if he plays another frogmite here. Flyer husk. And spring leaf charm. And a mirror enforcer. Obviously, one of the reasons to play this deck into another Thor cast. How's that? 15 cards into his deck already. 5 cards up on us. I think that was after a mile as well. And that's what we're looking for. Grey Merchant to stabilise and drain him out. Uh, you do a lot more winning with, uh, with the, the drain on Grey Merchant than you would in other decks here. I'm actually just going to victim this Mirror Enforcer now. Get an artifact off the table. Might be worth uh, having a think about killing this germ. It doesn't get an artifact off the table, but I don't know. Could be worth it. Uh, probably blocking the frog mines better. Perilous research. Sacking Ica Wellspring. Value town. Strong draw engine in this deck. Strong draw engine, mana efficiency, ridiculous lands, spring like drum. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely definitely a uh, one of the reasons to play pauper is you can do shit like this. Um, it's really cool, in my opinion. Hmm. Well, that guy's gonna die. Interestingly enough, doesn't attack with Flayer Husk, so I imagine that he has an Atog in hand and wants to cast it second main. Oh, and a Carapace Forger, I guess. Also good. Another Tortured Existence, which is fine. A Another Obliate, which is also fine. Uh, still looking for that last land, of course. Uh, you know, we've had an empty board for most of the game, and he's had, you know, a little bit of power on board early, but honestly, these games aren't about that. You win in one or two swings. Um, Grey Merchant now is, what, I have six mana symbols on the table, so it'll be drained for eight when it comes into play. If I can ever chain them together, he's pretty screwed. Mirror Enforcer. What are you going to sacrifice? Bold Whispers. Good day, sir. It's been quite unlucky not to have found an Atog yet. I'm assuming he's playing them. Um, you know, I don't know everyone's list, so it's possible that he isn't, but yeah. Uh, Stinkweed Imp is 
Next to a land, probably the card that's still second best for us. Uh, trade with anything, which is, of course, good. And uh, we can keep getting it back and keep recycling our Grey Merchant, should we get to that point. If he attacks into it and it dies, I will probably not be getting it back this turn. Although, you know, having a Tog Protection is pretty good. So... We do need to block here, though. Um, Starting to get to the life total that, you know, we could die, so... We can draw pretty much anything here, and it's going to be good for us. Uh, any creature will allow us to put a Stinkweed Imp back on the table. Okay, we might be dying to fling here, though. Chromatic uh, Star is the good good one of the two. Um, Chromatic Sphere dies when you sacrifice as part of the ability, but Chromatic Sphere cycles just when it dies at all. So if you can sack this out to something, you draw the card either way and, and you don't need to activate the ability. If this isn't Fling, I'll be extremely surprised. You got me. Alright, cool. I'll land short in that game, I think. Yeah, I got his draw engine on and really took us to pieces. Um, it's possible that we want to keep Sign in Blood here. Uh, keep up on cards. I'm actually going to try it. Uh, at the expense of... Tendrils was terrible then. I would like to have a game having cut it. Tortured Existence is interesting. I think we need to keep it in the deck at all times. Marsh Mist Titan does outsize many of the threats in that deck, so we'll keep that in as well. Hopefully we'll have a hand that allows us to... Uh, we're not going to mulligan this, but... Um, basically we want to be able to protect against the 4-4s four without having to use all our removal on them, so we have removal left for the Atogs. That's the uh, basic game plan. Turn one drum. Uh, I'm just going to play Witches here, I think. Continue putting as much Devotion on the battlefield as possible. There's no need to sign in blood right now. The old 2 cost 4-4. Four, four. Seems good to me. Stinkweed Amp is good. Uh, hmm. I'm going to sign blood myself, and if we draw a swamp, we can play Carrion Feeder. But we don't, so we're just going to play that. I have to suck up 4 damage this turn, but the Doom Blade will mean that we don't get combo killed by anything. Any frog mites he may have will be free at this point, and that starts to mean that he gets some dangerous mana efficiency on his mirror enforcers, depending on what his hand is made up of. Um, basically, I just don't want it at the orc cast. Yeah, mirror enforcer. Let's see if he taps it with the spring leaf drum. He does not. Okay. Hopefully it seems good here. We can't deal with both 4-4s, four but we can deal with the untapped one. Uh, we want to draw lands and Grey Merchants, but... Lands first, Grey Merchants seconds, please. Galvanic Blast or something, I imagine.
What do you got for me, buddy? Cycling into red. Well, if he has the fling, we're dead. <laughs> Sorry. Or if he found it just then. Just another carapace forger by the look of it. You know, just another two girls for four. Eh, no big deal. Yeah, it is. How much do you cost, Marsh Uh Minus five, so excited at seven, so it's two cost. How cool is that? Not a literal question, of course. Some amount. Yeah, two cost. I'm still not sure that we can cast it. Um, I imagine our number one priority here will be keeping a. Uh, some mana up to deal with the tog, I guess we cast carrion feeder. Cause why not? Uh also means March Mist is one cost next turn. Slides in nicely next to a stinkweed imp. See how gritty he wants to get. Um, again, if he has the fling, we are simply dead. So, uh, playing around that as much as we can, which is not at all. Having the Marsh Mist next turn, hopefully drawing a swamp, um, would be excellent. Oh, I should have sacrificed that to carry and feeder. That's a. Uh, yeah, pretty bad. Imagine you'll get rid of the uh, tree. Yep. Yeah. Another carapace for you. Seems good. Well, I uh, I think we're almost certainly dead unless we draw a swamp now. And if he's a fling, we are dead as well. So. Let's just kill this attack here. Nope. Okay, well. <laughs> I don't think that was greedy in that that was our only out anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so I think we were dead either way if we had a fling there, right? Yeah, four guys. Play Marsh Miss Titan plus Stinkweed, theoretically, if we had that at all. And, yeah. I'm going to draw a card. No. Okay. Well, we lost that one. I think that the Affinity deck is very strong, but the matchup has been good for me in the past. Um, there have been a couple of awkward hands, but obviously, you know, something with this much pressure, such a powerful draw engine, and such high card quality is always going to be difficult. Uh, I love playing against this stuff, though. Uh, this is part of the reason that Pauper is just a sweet format. Two cost 4 fours exist amongst, you know, terrible cycle lands and ridiculous stretch cards and stuff like that and all the while you were only playing with commons. Uh, anyway, we're going to move on to another match. Thanks for watching.